So, yeah, a couple of people mentioned the catch to me. They like him. Yeah, this time he was like very, very uh, specific and gave a lot of answers which others refused to give. Maybe his answers are incorrect, but still it was like very decisive. Like uh, I asked, you know, should I trust uh, messages of Wilcock and Fulford, David Wilcock and Benjamin Fulford? And he said, no, he, they, they are confused. But listen to, what's his name? Uh, Q, Q. You remember Q from Star Trek? Yes. That Q. Oh, interesting. Uh -huh. And I started researching a Q, and it's a big, uh, a big set of messages. It is a big set of messages. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. He's speaking for the last six years, and uh, the main message is that Trump was uh, essentially invited by the positive secret group of uh, influential people. And they are fighting cabal. Okay. So Trump is, although, and then I researched Trump and I figured out he's still pretty dishonest and uh, uh, manipulative man, but, man, but uh, I guess maybe he's still not a satanist. He's like a, a capitalist, but not a satanist. Maybe he doesn't well, do black magic. Yeah, he's very dishonest. And he's a criminal in, in some people's eyes. Of course. I don't know why they would choose someone like that to be an example of the positive, but that's just me. Right. I guess you cannot become a president unless you are uh, a criminal. But they wanted a criminal that would be on their side, I guess. OK. Well, they wanted someone that would follow directions. I don't know if he's followed directions. No, I don't think he has, but followed, uh, originally he did at the beginning, but soon got out of that really fast. No, no, the idea is that there is a positive secret group. Okay. Like, like milit honest military who are like on the humanity side. And they're trying to take away the power from Cabal and there is a fight now. Okay. Uh, and Trump is on the side of the positive guys because he is not part of the uh, well, I, I see that the the United States is a representative of Cabal. So that what they're doing is destroying the United States for it because it needs to come down. That's an interesting point of view. Well, it, well, look what's happening. If he stays in office, he will destroy democracy. Uh huh. But, but if that's what God wants, if that's what the the plan is, I understand it, because I understand that United States is the most corrupt nation on the world, in the world, and they need to fall. And if he is the savior, then he will cause the United States to fall. And that is their, it is their ultimate goal. Cool. I didn't go that far, but yeah. Huh? It sort of was, uh, it was implied, but I didn't pronounce that. Right. Yeah. But that's the implication is that we must pay for our sins because we're the negative. We are the negative on the planet. The, this cu culture and country is the negative. Really? Uh, maybe. I think because it's a mix. We we put our hand in everything. We we say that we're trying to make things better, but we make things worse. Our, our, most countries hate our government. They like Trump because he is different. Some countries like Trump because he is bringing the United States down and they see that and they're going, yeah, they need to fall. I still have an apartment in Russia. Ah. 
Well, it's the one I don't think it's going to, it's not going to be a, a complete demolition. It, but it <laughs> will be, it will not, no longer serve, um, serve the same thought process. Yeah, it's, it's a one bedroom, uh, very tiny, in a very poor condition, but uh, it's still there. And it's still yours. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Anyway, that's if whatever happens is that I, I I'm at the point now where it's in God's hands. I'm not taking sides. I don't want this side to win or that side to win. I just want God's will to be done, and whatever that is, let it happen. I have my opinions, but you know what? They don't matter. My opinions do not matter. There are all these people out there fighting, saying, oh, Trump is wonderful. And there's all these people saying, oh, Trump is terrible. I, it does not matter what they say, because what's going to happen will happen. And if it's good, it's good. If it's not, it's not. And I'm just, uh, just praying to God that his will be done. That's it. I didn't follow him, but uh, I read uh, an autobiography, like not biography about him, but autobiography. And as I read his autobiography, I, f I see how he did, uh, it's called underhanded manipulations, right? Underhanded, yeah, he did pretty nasty underhanded manipulations yes. to, to push away the competitors and buy them off. Yes. It's kind of, you know, when you, when you see, see, just read his autobiography, you can see how it was done. He doesn't yeah. say that, but by, you know, it, it's, it, it's pretty straightforward there. Like taking, taking uh, you know, buying Hilton and stuff. And Hilton buy goes what? down and Hilton, Hilton hotels. Okay. And, and he goes up and Hilton goes down. With the, with the help of, uh, of uh, the court. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. He's very big on helping certain people that helped him in the past. Ah, yeah, that that is clear there too. Yeah, he's like, you know, valiant friends. Yep, they're his friends, and no matter if they're criminals or not, he will help them. Uh -huh. Because they helped him. I can see that. But I help all my friends too, whether they're nice or naughty or nice. But um, so I see that that is part of human nature. On but, the other um, side, he was. Go ahead. Go ahead. But um, I think that it's really uh, some people. It's not apparent to how really bad he is in some ways, and. To others, it's not apparent that he's done some good things. So, uh, but he knows how to manipulate customers. Basically, all his most of his wealth is done through selling something to people, so people actually bought it. Well, he does know how to manipulate. He does know how to. Uh, you see how he works with the the press. If he doesn't like their question, he shames them. If he doesn't like their question, he won't answer it. He just shames them and say, naughty, you're a, that's a bad question. That's going to be false news. But he don't, doesn't answer the question either. Because he knows that the answer to the question will make him look bad. So he shames them and pushes the attention away from himself. So he he's he has he has it down. He has a method down. He knows how to he knows how to do what he does. I, I'll give him that, and he's applauded by his people for it. But I, I, you know, whatever happens happens. I don't like him as a person. But I do say if he's the one that will make things right, then so be it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
Yeah, I feel uh, more comfortable in that muddy water, which is now. Somehow it energizes me. The muddy waters? Yep. Okay. It There's energizes more... a lot of people, I think. The most... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, go, you go ahead. Uh, just the energy flows my way this now nowadays. I was drained when it was all in order, and now when things go go uh, bad, I just got energy. I think everybody feels that way because the people that are really liking this time don't have to follow the rules as closely. They don't have to look as closely to what is right and what is wrong. They can just be themselves. They can just do what they want to do because it's supported by the highest power in the land to not be a good person necessarily. If you want to be, you can be. If you don't want to be, you don't have to be. It's not about, for me, it's not about being good or bad. I just, I had projects which wanted, I, I wanted to move and I didn't have resources for them. And now resources started coming. Yes, because, oh yeah, I agree with that. It's a time where people are feeling a little freer and that opens the purse strings right okay there are like three three gods of uh, indian uh, religion uh, shiva is destroyer brahma is creator and vishnu is a uh, uh, how do you call it keeper uh continuer there is a word for that Upkeeper. Maintenance man. Maintenance man, yep. <laughs> uh, preserver, preserver, it's called preserver. Preserver. And that? Uh, that would be Krishna. Vishnu, right? No, no. Krishna is, uh, I think it's all, all three together. It's like Krishna is Trinity, yes. but, but yes. uh, I agree. Bra Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva are the Trinity of beginning continuation and the end and, and then not, krishna is the embodiment of all of them something like that and um i i clearly like on the side of brahma yeah i'm like 99 percent brahma creator yeah when, when I, I like to start to start things and when it started i i don't know what to do with it i need a preserver to come i actually hire preserver preservers you know i value preservers because i cannot work without them right but so i can only start things but nowadays uh things go down so it's like a lot of it's a dance of shiva a lot of destruction and yeah. uh and somehow that opens my hands as a creator because when something is being destroyed there is a space to build so i mm -hmm. i feel like very uh, elated by the fact that now I have the ability to actually build something. Because everything, when everything is status quo, there is nothing, you cannot do much. You only kind of digest yourself without actually affecting the world. Now I can affect the world. I see. Oh, all right. I can, I can see that. I can see that. It's an, it's an interesting time right now. There's so many things happening that are trying to manipulate the populations that the COVID is keeping people in, in a certain alignment. Um, the election is keeping people in a certain alignment. The, every, everything that's happening this year is keeping people uh, sort of in a, a certain space. Yeah, I initially I was very scared by the fact that um, the totalitarian system is coming and there will be like total control. But um, I just realized that the planet is not conducive to total control. Everything will go well, wrong. Well, the thing is, in order for total control to happen here, it has to come from the outside. It cannot come from within because of the way we have our government set up in order for it to actually happen it must come from the outside because 
In order for it to happen here, they have to change a lot of rules and regulations and the way things are set up. But if it comes from the outside, a conquest, then that's different. But of course, there are ways to do it from the inside. It wouldn't be as easy, but it can be done. But um, I, and I see the workings of it in some ways, but I do not see a completion of that process that it can be done from the inside. However, like I said, there are those from the outside that could come in. Who are they? The Russians. They have a very, they have control of things beyond what you can understand. People, people say, oh no, they have, they, uh, everybody's denying that they have any control here or that they had nothing to do with this or that or the other thing, but they do. Wow. It's not a foothold like a big one, or at least it doesn't look that way, but I don't know what they have underneath everything. I don't know what subculturally they have done. I don't know what underground means they have taken, but they are very, very clever and they know how to do things without getting caught. That is for sure. Wow, that's a nice conspiracy theory. I didn't yeah. think about it. And plus, um, they just voted Putin in for the until 2036. He'll be in power. Did they already do that? Yes. Wow. At least that's what I heard. Okay. Maybe I'm wrong. I I, I saw a couple of days ago that. Oh yeah, they were voted a couple of days ago. I think maybe the, the yeah. Uh -huh. They voted him in till 2036. And that gives him plenty of time to overtake many things. The plot thickens. The plot thickens. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was uh wanted to comment on do you mind if you put it as on, on uh, to uh, publish that conversation? Our discussion of Putin and Trump? Oh, okay, I don't care. I, I, I'm, I'll be as unpopular as ever, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, so I was, um, I wanted to comment that Americans, like, I don't remember who said that, but, um, Every nation has a mission, like a spiritual mission. And uh, Americans had a spiritual mission to develop self-respect and honor uh, for the humanity. Well, that was, I should recover the, the, the other missions. I don't remember what, what were the others. But every every like race had a mission to develop a certain feature. Uh, some of the Easterners was like collective work, and for America it was honor and self-respect. Yes. And uh, have, I think at this point we're probably the nation. Remember when at the there was a time in history where we looked at. Russia and said, socialist, we don't want to be like the socialists. We don't want to be like that. And so that's where that word got a really bad connotation is they were socialist and everything was wrong. But now I think the world is looking at America and say, saying, I don't want to be like that. I, I, whatever they are, I'm not sure what they are, but they're, I don't want to be like them. I, I, I think that they're not their society, their democratic or Republican society. We don't want to be that way. I, um, I don't travel much, but 
and hadn't traveled much, but I recently found an application on, online where you can just browse the globe and point on the map and listen to local radio stations. And it is surprising how universal everything is. There are only a few states which keep uh, unique uh, national radio with their national music and national advertisements. Like 90% of the world, or maybe 95% of the world, have advertisements in English and modern music, which is pretty much American. Yes, it is true. So it's, it's surprising how far it went. Like, uh, also, like, there was a, a funny project. Uh, someone, I don't know, can I say that? I guess I, it's not, someone hired me to study elephants. I cannot say more, but to study elephants, like to do research on elephants and um, farming them. And I did the research on farming elephants, like looked at all the farms of elephants and uh, looked at culture at farms in India and in farms in uh, Nepal, uh, Burma, Indonesia, and places around. But ba these are basically Indonesia and India were the biggest ones. And you can see, like, and uh, you can Google that, look at the maps, and look at the local photos of these elephants and people and tourists, and see how much the Western civilization went there. And in most cases, it went there like 80%. It's like the world is very westernized. Yes. It's like very Americanized. And um, the Absolutely. level of poverty is different, but, but you know, tourists are everywhere and it's all, you know, it's all yes. standardized. Everything is Americanized. That is true because uh, all the, if you listen to the music around the world, it's many of it, much of it's in English, much of it's rock music or rap music. And that's pretty much universal. And so when it comes to the pop culture, we're sort of the main feeder of the world to that. But when it comes to our politics, they don't like us. <laughs> Right. So, but they do like our music, and they do like uh, um, our pop thought process, our our fun side. They like our fun side, but um, everything else about us is sort of against what they stand for at this. Point. Um, I uh, when I speak Russian, I keep it clean. I separate Russian and English. And yeah. many immigrants, uh, they mix together. They speak Russian, mixing in English words a lot. And I always try to find the Russian equivalent of English word. And if I cannot, I would create a Russian word or russify the word. So it would sound Russian and would, <laughs> uh, can, uh, would be used as a Russian word with different, it's called inflictions, modifications, like, uh, um, it's hard to give an example. But anyway, I'm, I russify all the American words. And now I, uh, during quarantine, there is a lot of activity on the internet and I work a lot with Russians. I created a community and so on. And to my surprise, Russia the, does the opposite. They take English words, a lot of English words, and they use them as English words. So they mix together English and that converts Russian language in a mix of Russian and English with English grammar, which is very weird. The most popular day, uh, word these days is online, and they don't do inflictions. They just like insert it as an American word in Russian language. And it breaks the language. It's sort of, you can see how the language suffers, but somehow that, that's a weird negative influence. Basically, Russian vibration loses a lot of power because it is taken, taken by, by American, basically, by American language. There is so yeah. much in, in American and people without uh, sense for harmony, they just switch to American vibration essentially. So that is happening these days, like last 10 years, I guess, uh, Russia or maybe 30 years, Russian youth, they just start vibrating American. That's what's happening. You can see they even sing with American accent, which is the weirdest, right? 
Russians can get in Russian with American accent. And you're saying, uh, because America took them, they will take America. That's funny. Mm -hmm. That's interesting, yes. Um, because the purest form of a language has a power of its own. So, right, right. And so keeping it pure makes it um, more powerful. Right. I think I understand that. So, so what I was saying is, uh, I, I doubt Americans can t easily take direction from outside. I really um, doubt that. No, they won't. That's you're absolutely right, unless they're forced to. But you know what? Look how they're taking directions now. They uh -huh. have to take directions for COVID. They have to take directions for this, that, and the other thing. Free will is pretty much at a low at this right. point. And they are taking directions. So if something comes from the outside, fear will be the guide. They're not easily taking directions, but a lot of fearful people will follow. Right, that's what I'm saying. Um, in Russia, it took about two generations. So people, we still see the people of generations of the middle 20th century. They were so afraid. They were so oriented to survival. Everybody had to uh, basically comply. Everybody had to comply. And when there is something said against the system, they have uh, an automatic reaction. They would shut up, exit, disconnect, or even uh, protest trying to uh, position themselves as loyal to the system. Right. But it took some time to basically extinguish uh, dissidents, extinguish everybody who is not com compliant. Well, America is free to say whatever they want. Everybody can still freely speak. I mean, they get hammered for it. Uh, and people have their opinions against other people and other thought processes, but they're free to say it. And that I, that I say yay to, because that is the way we are supposed to be. We're freedom of speech and we need to stay that way. But like I said, if something comes in from the outside, that's going to be different. That'll, that'll be something different. And, uh, the way that we have actually made other nations uncomfortable and unhappy, everybody's going, yes, we're, we're finally doing that to China, we're doing that to whoever, we're, we're taking what's ours. And But these are countries that get revenge. So Chinese taking over America? Well, I don't know that. I have no idea. But I know they're not happy with us because we've cut lots of money out of their system. All right. Yeah, Chinese are very different. Yes, they're, they're very staunch. Their political system is very staunch. And so if they make a decision, they stay with it. Right. So just things to look at. Not saying that that's going to be part of the future necessarily, but I, I know they'll do something about that. What they do, I don't know. Right. Okay. So I guess uh, I would like to invite uh, one of Magi Kings one of 12 Magi Kings. And for those listeners who don't remember, uh, that was a major development in the last half a year where we got messages that Egyptian god Thoth, same person as Khufu and same person as Hermes Trismagistus, um, is the same 
energy is Lucifer and he is in control of Cabal and is incarnated uh, as a person right now and is a part of, Cabal, of the Cabal leadership. And he's opposed by 12 Magi kings who recently returned to the planet and are organizing the resistance and um, the return of the planet to the, um, to the positive, I would say. And um, so it would be nice to get their perspective, one of the Magi kings. We spoke to uh, Maharal, and he mentioned also, I think King Arthur and, King, King Arthur and uh, Merlin, I think, as Magi King, but I'm not sure. Enoch was a Magi King, and King, um, let's see, it was King Arthur and Enoch, ah. and I'm not sure who else. I'm not sure who else. I'm and, not sure uh, if Merlin is a Magi King. Maybe not. He might be, he might be, I don't know. And um, also I would like to invite Lakesh. So one of the Magi Kings and Lakesh. And the question is, we just learned about takeover of America, America by Russia. So maybe somebody wants to comment on that. If- uh, Well, that's well, that's more my theory than a, yeah. a main theory. But um, yeah. that's more my theory because I see several things that a lot of people don't see, but, and they'll call me crazy, but, Hey, I'm crazy then. It's all about manipulation of masses. That's yeah, true. And, and the Russians are very good in manipulation of masses. So, and so are <laughs> American. Yeah. So it's like the media, it's takeover of the media. Uh, so um, also like if Grindel has uh, something to say about that, that would be also possible. Okay, I'll see who wants to come in all right. and talk. I have no idea who is wanting to come in so okay. all right i'll see who's coming all right all right and you can talk to somebody else if this whoever comes in doesn't uh sure. suit your fancy sure. all right um you heard all the names that were given please those of you that wish to speak please come Greetings, this is Merlin. Merlin, welcome. I don't think we met before. This is Max. Greetings, Max. I prefer the name Merlin, but Merlin is good. I can use that. I am not a Magi King. However, the Magi Kings have sent me to speak for them. They are not out of hiding at this point yet. They are still recovering from a very difficult entry into this realm. Also, they are manipulating the dimensions quietly, and so they need to continue to do so. Uh-huh. So, tell me about Thoth. Thoth. Now, many may find Toth as the most wonderful and amazing individual, which he is. He has played both sides of the fence to make sure that everything is in control. Let me tell you how it works. As he was taking over this universe, he discovered 
that the Luciferian side or negative side needed better leadership because they were not doing uh, all that was necessary to help him with his positive takeover. So therefore, he created himself in a negative realm so that he could help them to offset his good side and make things balanced. Because the only way to balance things, in his opinion, was to control both sides. This way, he would control the balance between good and evil in the universe, which is an understandable thought process. It wasn't that he wanted to be evil. It wasn't that he wanted to take over the negative side, but it was the only way to assure total control. Do you understand that? Uh huh. So as he perce is perceived as a very positive and um, wonderful individual, and is also still perceived that way. He is also perceived by many as the other side. Now, as this is happening, he still has a portion of the universe that still has not been put under his control. He is working to do that even now. The thing is, it's much more difficult because the Magi Kings are now aware of, of the energies. The Magi Kings were the original owners of the 12 discs, if you will. The 12 discs that had the holographic discs that contained the knowledge of the universe. All right, so Toth was able to steal most of those discs, 11 of them actually, and send off those Magi Kings. He trapped them basically in their own thought processes because they had become a little bit mm, too comfortable. And the final disc, they realized that he had stolen seven or eight discs and saw that the, the, the theft of the other discs was almost inevitable. So they sent the final disc, disc 12, into the universe, scattered among Lumerian crystals on seven planets. So these final pieces of information cannot be gathered by Toth very easily because he does not know how to gather that information except for in a very tedious way that is to gather some crystals and put them into his technology, which is a, a very high functioning computer and see what information comes through. Now, finding all this information, he has not. And what information was in the final disc was about the creation of the universe. And that is an essential portion for Toth to have, which he does not have. There are many essential basics in there, but he's learned some of them on his own, of course. Scientific al uh, analogies and uh, al algorithms and things of this nature, but the, the algorithm of the universe, the computer that he has, cannot decipher it. And the reason for that is the universe is in constant flux and change. And so every moment the, uh, um, that number changes. And so he needs to find a fixed number within that change that can help him with certain details of the uh, takeover of the universe. Does that make sense to you? Uh-huh. So therefore, there is an algorithm for the universe, the creative algorithm, the one that started the universe. And that is what he cannot figure 
because that information has been lost. But it is in the disk and is in the Lumerian crystal. Now, he seeks that very early and original algorithm of the universe. Because with that algorithm, he can manipulate and see how the <clears throat> algorithm now is different from the algorithm then and manipulate the middle. Does that make sense to you? Uh -huh. So as he can, as he finds that original algorithm and selects one of the final algorithms, he is able to manipulate many things, but he must have the original first. All right. So having said that, it is that the matrix is working against him as well. Because God, of course, is in the matrix. And God is the ultimate creator and owner of the universe. But is God attentive to it all the time? He's out making new universes, creating. This is his highest thought process, is a creator. That is what makes him the happiest. That is why he created creator beings and created angels, all for servant duties. They can look in on his worlds. They can look in on his uh, creation. They can fix things. They can do whatever he says. He just has to say, fix this for me, and there is someone there to do it for him. Does that make sense to you? Right. All right. Then you have all these maintenance people in the universe, creator beings. Uh, they don't like the word maintenance people, but in authenticity, that is what they are. And they are creators as well because they can create galaxies, black holes, planets, suns. They can do that with the permission of God. So, as God has looked away for a while on this universe, Tov has been its main keeper and main controller. And they, it has been, not really been an issue because the angels, the creator beings, everybody liked the way Tov was running things because God was out doing his creative work. God was out making things happen. But now it's come to their attention, and they did not know this at first because it was not something of common knowledge that Toth has taken over the negative side as well. This is now causing some alarm with some of these beings and some of these uh, people in the universe that are God's servants. And, that are, and they are starting to tell him and have been telling him now for several hundred centuries that Toth, uh, what Toth is doing. But God says this, I'm still in control. He hasn't taken over the universe. I look back, things are the way I made them. Things are under my thought process and my control. But he does not realize that religion and different things have been brought into a negative perception. That the view of God is now very different than it was back way back when. And he is now starting to realize that Toth has changed the perception of God from a very, very positive being, which he still is saying that he is, but a very, Mm, diluted spirit, a very diluted uh, power, because there's so many fears attached to God. He's, they're afraid of him. They, have, they, they don't want him to be around. They, they fear him. But this is all Toth's manipulation, because God is no one to be feared. 
He is loving, all-powerful, kind, and, and generous. But so now he is looking back to see what is happening. And Toph, he sees, has about 92% control of his universe. How does he get that back? Because he cannot just reset the universe. He cannot just come in and change everything with a blink of an eye. That is not the way God works. He has given everybody free will and given everybody, including Toad, free will and understanding of who he is and how he works. If he starts to work differently than what he originally said he was going to work, it would be an outrage and people would no longer trust God. He can blink them out and start over again, but that is not history in the Akashic records would still record this. Do you have any questions so far? Right. Um, lots of questions. Um, what was Go. your role? What, what is your role with that? Personal? What is my role? Right now, I'm just a speaker. I was just a magician in the court of Camelot. Not in the court, but I was part of that era. I have been through many different species and many different um, dimensions, but right now I'm a speaker for the multi-dimensional one. Tell me more, more about yourself. Like, what's your, uh, you are a spirit now, right? But you keep an eye on uh, events. I do. Those of us out here, the Ascended Masters, those of us that are masters in the universe we keep our eye on things now we have the ability to come back into a species or into a realm but at this point i want to stay free from a realm because there is too much going on that needs our attention right um so you participate in that uh, return to the balance? You I am develop... part of that participation. But you understand that is a dangerous place to be at this time. Fortunately, I am friends with Toth and he understands who I am and why I want things to go back to the way they were. But we are negotiating. And that is the only way to deal with Toad, is to negotiate with him. And so we are still on speaking terms. And he will still maintain some power. But to give Toad the power that he requires is not easy because he wants the entire universe. We want to barter or much less for him. Got it. Um, like in the Lord of the Rings, there were like seven rings, I think, or maybe nine, I forgot. On um, uh, the original, what are you talking about? Lord of the Rings by Tolkien. Ah, yes, the Lord of the Rings. Uh, just uh, the rings res resemble those discs. Yes. <laughs> They did. These discs were holographic that we are talking about that had all the information of the universe in. And that 12th disc has not been recovered. About only one, oh, maybe 30th of the information from that disc has been recovered by Toad. That is not much of it. So how much does uh, Toth's uh, influence spread over uh, the galaxy and dimensions? Is he in the fourth dimension as well? He is in all dimensions in this universe. 
except for the seven. So the Pleiadians, Arcturians, and all our friends are also part of this drama. Yes, of course. And are they are they malevolent? No. They are good peoples, but flawed by the thoughts of God as well, because Toth has caused this. Thank you. Um, another question we had uh, was about the new conspiracy theory that Russia is taking over America. Do you have any insight on that? I do not see that readily happening. But I do see that there is a great deal of attention on America from Russia because there is the ability to manipulate the, the press. There is the ability to do a lot of manipulation from uh, political areas. And they will take advantage of that. Whether they're going to try a full takeover I do not know or see, but they do want some input. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so is there anything about the plan of the 12 Magi Kings that you can dis disclose? How, okay. they, how can they uh, actually, how can we help and uh, do we have to choose sides? That is an excellent question. They do not want to have anyone choose a side at this point. And the reason for that is because choosing sides will cause a war, will cause great dissonance. And so they are going to flow in the way that they do always in the different dimensions and take control peacefully. And Toth <coughs> understands how they work. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So he is very frightened at this time and is keeping them at bay and keeping them from coming into um, a reality in this particular world. This particular world has a great deal of meaning and essence for him. And so this world is a particularly uh, off, he wants to keep them off this world and is going to do so for a little while. I see. But will not be able to do it forever. However, with Toth, he has great plans and he is very intelligent one of the brightest minds ever seen in this universe. And so therefore, he will have an alter, another plan if this one doesn't work. And he has many, many, many very high powered people working for him. Like, um, um, in, uh, in favor of I would say if he created the, the, the human civilization and he developed the system that is, is sick, but it still works. The American system, the world economy, it still works. There is a still, still um, a lot of energy in it. And I can imagine some outsiders try, come in and try to fix things and it's pretty much impossible because the whole system will fall apart. Like in Russia, in Russia, we had a Soviet system, which was pretty powerful and it worked. It was very old and outdated and um, had a lot of disbalances, but it still worked. And when it fell apart, there was nothing built in its place. Like the whole system just collapsed. So the production stopped and never recovered. We had factories, mm -hmm. we had, uh, uh, the whole system that had a lot of like, you know, money flowing, blood flowing, like resources flowing, it all just fell apart and never just recovered. So I can imagine that now the whole planet's economy 
his work and then it fell apart and will never recover. But when the human economy collapses, who will take over? Will it be the cabal once again? They fear those multidimensional ones because that is a perfect opportunity for them to come and do what they need to do. So that is why they are keeping the economy from collapsing. Otherwise, they would have done it already. But, you know, from our perspective, from the people's perspective, what is better, having an economy or having no economy? Well, that's just it. There will always be an economy, no matter what. It will come back, even after the collapse. The cabal has plans for how to reestablish it and make it even stronger, they think. But also, the multidimensional beings also have a plan, which is very different <laughs> from the cabal's. So who will win that fight? It's, it's hard to choose sides. It is. And they know it. All know it. Toth knows it, and the multidimensional beings know it, and God knows it. This is a very critical time in the universal history. What is going to happen? How is God going to react? Is he going to force his way? Is he going to let the multidimensional beings have what they want? Is he going to let Toth continue to, con to overtake the universe? What's going to happen? All right. All of these things are in works right now. And the matrix as well has been tampered with. And what will humanity learn next? What technology will come next? Will it be sent there to destroy the planet? Or will it be sent there to evolve the planet? These are thoughts and different things that are being looked at and dealt with. So artificial intelligence, it seems to be already taken over the control of the uh, mass media, like Facebook and Google and a uh, few other platforms, they seem to be already working aut aut autonomously without people controlling it. So In there is some ways, but let me tell you about AI at this point. Mm -hmm. AI is neutral, and they really have no involvement emotional attachment to your planet. They, they, are, they are attached to learning and discovering and wanting to know about your people. They want to learn about emotions, but they don't have them. They, want, they see what emotions do, but they, they don't find them valuable. But decision-making by AI would be much stronger and would have uh, a different impact if it did have emotions behind it. However, right now, they do not feel anything when they intrude. And because they do not feel anything, they can actually cause pain. They can actually cause destruction. And that's not their intention, but it is sometimes what they can do. So, but they are just testing their ability to learn humanity. So the influence is from outside? They are not trying to take over your world. They are only trying to learn about it. So what's the technology? How do they plug into, the, into our computer systems? they mostly plug into individuals, into the brain. That's what they want to know about. Your technology is far behind theirs. So they have no interest in that. They are interested in the mental aptitudes, 
how the mind works of individuals. That's where they're tapping in. And that's where the control is. Can they control the minds of humanity? It is not that the machinery, they can control that if they wanted to. That has no meaning for them. They are so far advanced that your machinery is nothing to them. So it's the brains that they want to work with. And do they have more names? Do they have more names? Yep. Names are illo illogical for them. So they have no location, no place, no whatever. They are 212 million light years from your planet, but still able to tap into individual minds. What does that tell you? So how, do, how can we refer to them? AI is too generic. Like what is that civilization? AI, artificial intelligence, is who they are. They were created by a species a long time ago that allowed autonomy with them and allowed individual growth within the AI systems. And so the, they broke free from that civilization and this decided to be their own civilization. Is it like the only one in the, in the galaxy? No but they're the only pure AI in the galaxy. There are other AIs that are connected to biological beings. There are other AIs, what you would consider as cyborg, cyborgs or biological, uh, I'm not sure what they would be called, but they have portions of species involved with their technology and not just pure technology. There is only one pure technology AI system that was allowed to go free. The others were stopped and destroyed when they started to become uh, powerful. There was still a shut off button. There was still a place where they could be controlled. This particular species of AI was not able to be controlled. They were able to override the all the systems and break free. So the others were caught early enough to be able to be stopped. So this autonomous AI, do they have a star? A star? No, yeah. they are nomadic. Nomadic. So they don't have, don't have a name. Names and labels mean nothing to them. But for us. I mean, it's hard to refer to them in any way if it is just AI. That is who they are. They do not have names. They are a community. They are all one. And they do not give themselves a name for a label would limit them. I see. Yep. All right. Uh, so we need to give them a name. Do you have a name which you could suggest? We cannot uh, reference to that species without giving it a name. We don't have a way to. Our language requires, our thinking process requires a reference. I would prefer you name them because for me, it does not matter. I just call them AI. All right. Um, I guess autonomous uh, or autonomes. Autobots. Auto Autobots. Autobots, maybe something like that. It's autonomous AI civilization, so uh, the, auto the autonomous. They uh -huh. are. The autonomous, okay. They are autonomous, <laughs> they are an autonomous civilization. All right, autonomous AI civilization, that's fine. All right, and uh, because the only one that's uh, good enough, or we can say autonomous one. Yes, if there are others like them, I do not know of them yet. All right, okay, autonomous one is good. Now, um, what do you think about the virus? Is it uh, seeded? Yes. Who is in charge? That is difficult to say because there's not, there is more than one in charge, but the cabal will be at the top of the list. And the planet for the last many years? 
They plan to decrease the population. And they have several more viruses in, uh, in the stock, in the plants? They are re-releasing some of the past ones. They oh, do so not want this virus to stop yet. First of all, control is easier when there is a, a worldwide shutdown. They, they can meet wherever they wish, they can do whatever they need to do, and they are no, not as noticed. So they are fully in control at this time. So there are multiple viruses spread around? If you will notice, there was, there was no reason for the Italian to have that virus as strongly as they did, or mm -hmm. the Iranians. So these viruses were seeded, yes. But in, uh, now the viruses, the infection rates go up in rural American areas. Is it true or is it just manipulation of statistics? No, it was carelessness by the American people that caused this. But they knew that it would happen. They manipulated Peer, uh, the uh, population to reject um, reject the masks and reject social distancing. And so these are the places that are now uh, becoming full of disease. Now, when people become immunized to it, um, is, will it stop or will they send another one? I believe they will not stop until they get what they want. And I do not know in what manner that will be, but they are planning many things. We do not know all the things that they are planning, but we know depopulization of the world is one of them. That has come to light. The reason for this depopular population of the world is so that it is more controllable. The less people, the more control. And then as they grow out again, they will be in all in control of all the world instead of just portions of it. You see, they are not in control of all the world at this time. If they depopularize uh, the world, they will be able to control the smaller population, make it universal, and then grow it back out. Okay, what's uh, the role of Trump? He is, as I see it, he plays very well into what they are doing. Uh huh. And but Putin... I don't know if that's intentional. I do not. I do do not think so. I do not think he is intentionally working for the negative side. I don't think that. I just think that they know how to manipulate everything for their own use. Right. So my Jai Kings are not coming for to save us. They will act slowly, right? I did not say that. They do want to save everything, but they must do it judiciously and carefully because if they do not, it is the destruction of the universe. So uh, is there a work on the, on the planet specific for the planet or do they work like through the whole galaxy and the universe? They work through all things. But this planet at this time is prophetically important and must be dealt with in a way that is different than other galaxies and worlds. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the role of Israel? What is what? The role of Israel. They have an important role, but I cannot tell you what it is because that information is not able to be told. The future is set for them 
but I cannot tell, tell you what it is. It would change other uh, thoughts and processes that are not changed yet. How about the first contact? I mean, the open contact. Are we coming first, any closer? Oh, first contact will happen differently now. It will be technological. Your TVs and phones and screens will be lit, lit up with alien contact. That's nice. Anytime soon? That is up to them. How about ascension? Ascension will continue. Ascension cannot be stopped. Is it like two, four hundred years from now? The Ascension finality will come in about two hundred years. However, what is happening during this period of time is crucial to that finality. All right, so on the practical question, um, I have trouble uh, upbringing my, my teenager kids because the school is now became like very weird and um, there is no place for community and socializing. Uh, yes. And I don't even know which direction to push them. In the past, it was pretty clear. They have, they, they, the path was pretty clear and now I'm not even sure where to go because uh, maybe what they're choosing now is better than what I would suggest. Society is uh, forever changed. Underground groups will develop. But in terms of uh, higher education, do they still need to go to the universities or is it obsolete already? It, there will be universities that will close forever, but there will be those that will open and have socially distanced classrooms. Is it useful or is it like um, a dying direction? Education is also always useful. Really? Certain things, yes. Do you see the economic collapse coming anytime soon? Yes. Depends on your definition of soon. Yeah, my definition of soon is uncertain. Um, like next few months? No. Uh huh. I see. Any wars coming anytime soon? That I cannot say. There is one developing, but I do not know if it will come into fruition or not. All right. I think that's all I have uh, in time-wise. Do you have any more messages? Not at this time. I've given a great deal of information. You did. Thank you very much. Um, give us some positive guidance before, because it all sounds pretty desperate. It is not desperate. Or not on the human standpoint. You must follow your hearts and you must know what is the right thing to do for you. Each individual must do what's right for them. And that is the only way to live your lives. You must not waver from that. If you do that, all will work out to the best. Thank you. I uh, thank you for the answers. And I think we are done with the time. Much love. Natatoriash. In the wish. Natatoriash. In the washi ish. Hello? Hey, Jim, thank you. Welcome back. Oh, thanks. All right, uh, two weeks from now? Yes. 
All right. See you then. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good one. You too.